you know when your day starts like this is going to be one with a lot of this on the all new KTM RC390 good chance you already recognize this all new bodywork and full LED lights which we have already seen on the all new RC200 we reviewed a few months ago well this one also gets all the updates to make it faster and lighter so this is about 1 kg lighter than the old model despite running a bigger 13.7 liter tank that's 4.2 liters more than the old bike and a lot of this weight saving is down to the new split chassis the lighter wheels and the new lighter braking system even the ergonomics have gone through a change so now the clip on sit about 15 mm higher to facilitate easy reach and they can also be dropped 10 mm if you're hitting the race track even the seat height is now up to 835 mm 15 mm more than the old model thanks to more travel so you have 10 mm at the front and 16 mm at the back what distinguishes the RC390 from its younger sibling is the fact that the rear shock now comes with rebound adjustability along with preload but what it misses out on are the fully adjustable WP Apex forks which we had seen on the RC390 sold overseas but what you do get is one of the most potent electronic system on any bike in this category we are talking i'm you based cornering abs traction control you get a quick shifter and auto blipper standard and the rc390 finally gets the tft screen that we had been waiting for which we had first seen on the 390 adventure electronics which have been built to harness the same 43.5 ps of power and 37 newton meters of torque that's 1 newton meter more compared to the old bike thanks to a 40% larger airbox and a brand new exhaust system which sounds like this just something deeply satisfying about hammering the RC390 at the tight layout at Sakhar. It's a track which rewards really high corner speed and how you fire the bike out at the exits to make the most of every single pony to have at your disposal. Something which the RC390 does better than most bikes. In fact, the old RC390 was the pointiest among the lot, was extremely agile, was almost telepathic in the way it changed directions. which is why i was really curious to see how the new rc390 with the lighter wheels the lighter braking system uh, and the wider clip ons does in terms of turn in and i was pleasantly surprised to see that ktm have actually managed to make it even more fluid in corners so now the travel the increased travel that you have at the front and the back the slight shift in the weight bias more towards the rear and The 6 mm longer wheelbase means that the new RC390 is even more progressive when you tip it into corners while still being lightning quick during quick change of direction. So it's a lot easier bike to carry a lot of speed into the corner. A lot of that also has to do with the way you fit on the motorcycle now because the new ergonomics. So even someone like me When I sit on the bike there's a lot of room to move around I can scoot all the way back so I can lock my outside knee onto the tank so when I'm entering the corners there's very little weight on the handlebar I was also really impressed with how the rear shock now performed right out of the box even in the stock setting the rear shock was by far the biggest achilles heel of the old RC390 because it was too soft which meant that you really had to bump up the preload Now on this one with the improved travel and the fact that you can also adjust the rebound damping means that you have a lot more control to tune the shock as per your weight and your riding style. And as you know, a real good shock also goes a long way 
in helping you put the power down in a more controlled fashion, which was also the main focus for KTM when it comes to their engine development. The larger airbox, the revised mapping and the new exhaust has not only helped KTM extract more torque, but also made the power delivery smooth and linear. So you no longer feel the torque kick which you did on the BS4 RC390. But when you combine that with uh, the new updated aerodynamics package, I was really surprised to see this bike clock a top speed of 175 km an hour with me and my 80 kg frame on it. That's the fastest I've ever clocked at the Tsarkhand racetrack. And it would have gone faster still if the straight was longer. But that is not half as impressive as the braking performance on this bike. I was truly blown with the feel and the stopping power that you have at your disposal. But more importantly, the cornering ABS on this is an absolute game changer. It is more like a performance enhancing system rather than safety measure that you see on most motorcycles. It is very, very unintrusive. In fact, it did not matter how many laps I clocked at the Tsarkhand racetrack, not once did I ever feel it intervene, no matter how deep I was breaking into a corner. And that's mighty impressive considering that this bike is still running the H-rated Medzilla M5s, which we know are not as sticky as the W-rated tires, which we experienced on the first generation RCs. And they definitely don't have the same amount of edge grip. So much so that I saw the rear coming around uh, when I started dialing in the gas with the bike still leaned over. I also wasn't as impressed with the quick shifter which failed to work despite the best attempt of fixing it by the service guys, the KTM service guys who were there at the track. Which was quite surprising considering how buttery smooth the auto blipper was to operate. But my single biggest gripe with the Indian spec RC390 is the lack of the adjustable front suspension because it robs you from exploiting the full potential of this motorcycle. The old RC was renowned for its fantastic front end which allowed you to just slap it into the corners at insane speeds. With this, you can no longer do that because the suspension is too soft and when you get on the brakes, there's a lot of movement and you have to wait for the suspension to settle before you can tip it into corners. It costs you both a lot of speed and time in every single corner which used to be the highlight of this bike. Which is a big loss and a big compromise in my books for enthusiasts because an RC390 with fully adjustable suspensions had the makings of not only a fantastic track tool but also a really good all-round motorcycle without costing a whole lot more. I'm saying this with so much conviction because this is undoubtedly the most comfortable RC yet. More travel at the front and the back means the ride quality now is nice and plush and more supple even over broken roads. And you can also spend a lot more time in the saddle now with the revised ergonomics before your wrists and your back give in. The seats too are well padded for the longer hauls and you will be able to definitely go a fair amount of distance now with this new 13.7 litre tank which has boosted your range to almost 310 odd kilometers. Also on the engine front, it's a lot more refined. Even when you're cruising at 140 kilometers an hour, there are barely any vibrations. But this is still a rev happy engine. It's not the most tractable. It only comes into its own around 6,000 RPM which means that you will have to play around with the gearbox a fair bit. Which is why the quick shifter not working on this bike was kind of a bummer. But when you use the clutch, the gearbox is still really nice and slick. Also, in terms of uh, long distance touring, another thing which I would have liked is perhaps a better design for the windscreen because when you're fully tucked, it's not a problem. But if you're riding upright and you're doing around 120 kilometers an hour, 
there is a decent amount of buffeting with the way the air is channeled onto your helmet. And now your commutes are sorted as well with the improved heat management thanks to the curved radiator because the RC no longer heats up as it used to, which is fantastic. The slip and assist clutch is nice and light to operate. You have adjustable levers to ensure that the bike fits you like it should. And then you have these folding mirrors which offer a nice view of what's happening behind you. You have 153 mm of ground clearance at your disposal, which is more than enough for you to scale our tallest speed breakers, even with a pillion. And even though this 835 mm seat height might sound intimidating when you first think about it, if you look at the design, the way the seat has been designed and how it tapers closer to the tank, it's not that difficult to have at least one of your foot firmly on the ground. And the fact that its curve weight is only 172 kgs makes the RC one of the easier super sport motorcycles to live with. Now for the million dollar question. Does the new RC with its 3.14 lakh rupee price tag justify its 36,000 rupee price hike over the previous model? Now if it had come with fully adjustable suspension and stickier tires like its European counterpart, this would have been a steal. The most well-rounded package, well-rounded motorcycle in this segment. Without it, the new RC is undoubtedly a much better road bike, more comfortable, versatile, easier to ride and equipped with the best in-class electronics, but still an incomplete package for enthusiasts who want to take it where it was born, the racetrack.